another amazing Cooligans episode. Coming at you on Labor Day. Oh, okay. more like Labor Day, dude. <laughs> All right. We are doing Labor on Labor Day. Why, dog? <laughs> so, no, we were recording this a, a, a few days early, but we wanted to make sure we have uh, an episode for you. We got to feed the people, dog. Monday night. Tuesday morning, you know how bro, it is. You After hungry, Labor bro? Day, you thirsty for content, bro? <laughs> Look what we got for you. Yo. People sliding into our DMs, they're like, "Yo, show me that new episode." Yo. <laughs> I say, "Yo, I can't talk." We we record, and he said, "Yo, show me, bro." <laughs> <laughs> well, I say he, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna be honest. It's most likely a it's, he, though. Yeah, we don't ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, this, bro. Bro, why if you don't really get that aggressive? Okay, you know what I, mean? <laughs> I do. We don't have too many. They, thems yeah. hitting us up. Okay? Nah, <laughs> nah. But I will say, if I tell wifey I'm cleaning, she'll be like, yo, show me. <laughs> okay. We accept DMs from anybody. Yeah, we're cool. Uh, so uh, so thank you so much, uh, everybody, for uh, for tuning in, uh, as always. It's the Cooligans, buddy. Uh, and we have Come a special... On. We have a special uh, episode because today we're going to be joined by a special guest. You may have seen him, uh, you know, a.k.a. Slow Feet Don't Eat. My mm. man Fafa Pico uh, of Nashville SC and the Haitian national team uh, coming through to Crazy, talk about. Bro. We got superstars. All these wild man. He's a he has to had to face Messi like within like eight days of each other. Bro, you know what I mean? He had to face him twice. Ten hours ago, he just played against <laughs> Messi. <laughs> he just played against uh, Messi. So you saw that that uh, nil nil draw uh, between Nashville and Inter Miami. And Fafa was kind enough to to, to hop yeah. on the show right after that. So uh, always uh, show. Show Fafa some love uh, if uh, if you're, you're hearing this or seeing this uh, because the man is the homie. So yes. Oh, and wait till you hear about his cats, bro. <laughs> wait till you. I learned uh, a lot about Fafa Pico's cats. Yeah. I didn't know that much about him. Okay. And here are his abs. Here if you're are watching, abs. if you're watching, <laughs> you're watching Fafa's abs. Okay, but that's it's just what I've I, never for not for like. A second in my life have I looked like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> From birth to now, I've never had this. I bet you look pretty good coming out the womb, Alexis. Yeah, so looking, bro, looking but the lean. ass wasn't defined yet, and my skull was soft. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, a rough time. Uh, so, uh, uh, so yeah. So I hope you're enjoying your your you know your long weekend. I hope you enjoyed the long weekend. And yeah. uh, so we'll we'll talk to Faf in a little bit. But we always got to remind people, like, yeah, hit the comments right now. What's the best thing you ate this weekend? Bro, let us know. <laughs> let us know, bro. Alex, this hit with the DM him with the important stuff. <laughs> Yo, stop, stop flirting with him. <laughs> stop Just it, send bro. Send him pictures of your food. Yo, sext me some food <laughs> pics, bro. <laughs> Why are you holding out? <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> You know what he wants. <laughs> you know why you started this conversation. <laughs> you wouldn't be here <laughs> if you didn't know. I hit the ignore button, <laughs> yo. I'm trying to see that food, bro. Um, but no, we, you know, it, it, it is uh, Labor Day, so yes. it, it's a time when a lot of people they they retire for the weekend, you mm. know, because retiring. <laughs> that just when I when I hear retire, I think of chilling. Finally, that's right. No more of this difficult work we do <laughs> with my social security. Oh, no fact! <laughs> right. I want to spend my children's inheritance at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want. So uh, yeah, look, uh, you know, we obviously uh, we, we we constantly think about uh, you know how we're gonna how we're gonna chill, how we're gonna relax. What are what are our 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 what is it what is it called? Uh, uh, not glory years. What is it? <laughs> well, uh, golden years. Golden years. Yeah. yeah. I was when you said glory. I'm like, where, where's it going? <laughs> where are we going with this one? <laughs> I know. My God. How hard are you trying to chill, my G? But we're, we are right, we're in our glory years with the nice cold course light because that's the best way to chill. That's right. I mean, and look, I sometimes you we've all got those friends where you're like, bro, I don't know if you're having a good time or not. Mm. You know what I mean? I don't know if you heat it right now. I don't know if you're cool right now. I don't have that problem with a nice can of course light. Because the Blue Mountain tells you, yo, I'm cool right now, bro. <laughs> feel free to enjoy me. You feel me? Uh, but no. So we always, uh, uh, always. We, I mean, look, we've been done, we've been doing this a while. We, uh, I think, we chill harder than most. All right. So yeah. we know what we're doing. So bro, please, someone say they chill better than us, but you don't know what you're talking about, dog. It's Absolutely, cap. it's all it's all cap, like yeah. the kids say, bro. Yeah, dude. Uh, so this summer, so that's uh, kizzy right there. Bro. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so this summer, chill like you're retired with Coors Light. Get uh, Coors Light delivered straight to your door 
with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. That's CoorsLight.com slash Cooligans. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden Colorado. <laughs> Go. All right. So uh, we got to get to our conversation with Papa Pico. Um, my uh, man just played against Inter Miami for this uh, for the second time. Uh, Nashville having a monster uh, of a season. Uh, just a, just an incredible team, incredible club. Uh, so it was great to talk to him. And yeah, uh, yeah and we get to um, look and yeah, stick around so you can learn about Fafa's cats. OK, mm. because you're not going to get this quality combo on any other show. So here Facts. it is. Here's our conversation with Fafa Pico. Wow, legends only. <laughs> okay, that's the that's the only rule we have on this show. That's it, bro. <laughs> okay. You gotta be a legend if you want to be on this show. <laughs> this dude, this is how much of a legend this man is. He may not even remember this. He was our first lockdown COVID guest. That's right. We were like, yo, who's uh we, we're all trapped at home. Who's the first person we need to call? And this is <laughs> yo, he can confirm this, but this is how we booked him. I text him. Now I know you ain't got nothing to do. Because we was locked down. You cannot lie to me and tell me you are busy. That was the official text. That was I, the, I know I got to step out. Me. Okay, the voice you just heard is the one and only from Nashville SC. Ladies and gentlemen, Fafa Pico, everybody. Thank you guys for having me. Great, Welcome. It's great to be back. Welcome you back, baby. Welcome back, man. It's uh you, you busy these days. It's not are. lockdown no more. <laughs> Yo, Loki, I'm outside, dog. I'm outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh Fafa, I don't even know where to begin exactly, but obviously you are uh just a veteran in this league. Uh, you know, uh, I didn't see veteran when my guy was running all over the pitch <laughs> against Miami. My dude was hitting that turbo button <laughs> for 84 minutes. Yeah, uh, look, uh, he still got the, the booster. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's what I ate before the game for that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just a bowl of monster energy? <laughs> no, no, rabo. I had an oxtail. You had rabo? Rabo wow. with, uh, with uh, rice and peas and platano. Wow. wow. <laughs> Damn, yo, did my mom cook for you? Yeah. <laughs> also, I'd be running after that too, but to the toilet. My team was running for 84 minutes. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, Papa, you look, right? We'll, we'll, By the way, if you don't know what Rabo and Platano and all that is, look it up. Get please. some Latino friends. Yeah, yeah right? Get some, get some Haitian want. friends. You need that. <laughs> so, okay, Papa, obviously, let's just start with the most uh, recent stuff because obviously, Nashville, um, as this season, last season uh are just literally one of the powerhouses uh in major league soccer but the and last still yo 100 percent. but this uh we'll talk about the game last night uh you know the, the rematch against uh, miami but we have to talk about the league's cup final uh obviously you scored in that game uh you know uh, you know it ended up going miami's way but let's Let's just. You're the. You're, I think you're the first player that we, we that we've had on that's played against yeah, and Messi, and then yeah. and you played against him twice and, and against Inter Miami, and and we know the team is just absolutely stacked yeah. and, and wild. But this this last like six seven weeks of your life, what have they been like with now Messi in this league and then playing against him twice? How how is Fafa Pico feeling about just being a professional in this league right now? No, oh, it's it's nuts. It's been crazy. It's been a, an amazing transition for the league. Um, obviously, on an individual level, you just want to be able to enjoy those games, and, and you know, just <clears throat> at the same time where you're you're seeing where he's at and seeing the type of player he is, you want to compete, and and also you know, there's a lot more viewers, there's a lot of people watching. You want to just show who you are as a player and and show what your team can do. So um, it's been dope, man. He's an amazing player. Uh, seems to be very humble. Um, he's achieved so much. So. It's great to step on the pitch uh, with, with a guy like that. Now, I'm, I'm curious about the, the, just the conversations from game one against Miami against, to game two against Miami. Because the game last night was, uh, uh, and we're, we're recording this, obviously, the day after that game. It's like so. 12 hours after the game. <laughs> so yeah. thank you, Papa, again for doing this. Anytime, but yeah, the, 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 the second time around, I mean, w the conversations about how to... Not necessarily tactically stop Miami, but like there has to be a, a little bit of like this dude ain't beating us. Somebody else got to do it. <laughs> Let what, Pippen try because we gonna stop Jordan. What are the egos like? <laughs> what are the egos like for for uh, Nashville players and, and especially leading into that second game? 
No, we know we, we know they've been on an amazing run um, since their additions. It's not just him. You got Busquets. You got Jordi Alba coming in. Um, they've been amazing additions. This guy Busquets is crazy in the middle. So, you know, at the end of the day, we we played them in the finals. We we lost that game over time. Um, it left us bitter at home because we really we really felt we played a great game and. At the end, we lost on 10-9 PKs, so it's it's tough uh, tough pill to swallow. But going into the league again, we got to fight for our points, and we know we're there at the bottom trying to scrape their way up the table. So going over there, we know it wasn't going to be easy with humidity, uh, the players they have, the run they're on, the momentum. Um, but we have a lot of pride, and we know the group we have overall, and we trust that, and we trust what we can do. Obviously, there's certain plays that he's going to make, and some of their players will make that. You just really can't do too much about, except try to be tactically smart and and put yourself in the right positions. And it takes a lot of grit. It takes a full team effort to get through those. I mean, I've been so impressed with your just, especially last night, just your ability to like press. Like you're clearly like ready to go. It doesn't matter where what time the clock is on. But you mentioned Busquets. Is there something really frustrating about it? Because when you watch it, you're like. He's not moving fast, but he's here one second, gone the next. It's yeah. like, oh, he was right here, bro. Yeah. Is there, maybe it's not even just Busquets, but players like that. Is that frustrating sometimes? I mean, at the end of the day, like you said, he doesn't move fast, but he just sneaks up in these little pockets, and you're like, yeah. you know, okay, somebody <laughs> else got to Where's my, where's my wallet? Yeah, I just have my wallet. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he wearing your shirt? <laughs> I was just New York, wearing it. The New York bump check to make sure nobody <laughs> stole that off you. And <laughs> like, yo, Mans was just here. And, and Messi does the same. So it's they kind of play off each other in a strange way. And then you have dynamic strikers as well, um, like Joseph, that's, that's moving off of them as well. So it's, it's just very dangerous uh, all around. But my job as a striker and, and winger, depending on the game, is to just kind of close in those angles, uh, make it as make it as difficult for Busquets as possible to have to play back uh, as much as possible, or not be able to just play balls through lines um, as comfortably as he wants to. So try to disturb him uh, and make the defenders make the play, because at the end of the day, they're further back on the field, and um, and I think it's better if we're able to press higher than than just drop down, because that's when Messi and the rest of their attack becomes extremely dangerous. Right. I mean, look, yeah, and yesterday, you Messi did didn't thing. do that. I mean, he did. Well, he, he tried to do everything that he normally does, but it, it, it he got it. frustrated. Nashville, a lot. Nashville has played Inter Miami better than any uh, club so far. I mean, we've seen that across uh, the, the two matches. But I, I want to talk about the that that Leeds Cup final, and you know, a lot of the talk about whenever Messi goes a, a, anywhere, you see a lot of pink jerseys in, in yeah. the in the stands. Uh, and that really wasn't the case in Nashville. Oh, you also got a lot of booze every time you touched yeah. the ball. Yeah, uh, Nashville <laughs> showed up. What? We haven't been to Nashville yet, but I mean, as far as, far as you being a player who, who's played in, in, in a few different MLS clubs, this environment looks remarkable. What What is it like just simply being a player there and being expe- uh, uh, um, accepted by the by the fans? Uh, playing for Nashville is amazing. Um, you feel it in the, your day to day life. You also feel it obviously when you go to the stadium. Um, I didn't expect anything less in that in that final. I knew there was going to be a lot more pink jerseys than maybe um, we'd be used to on a, on a regular. But um, we knew our fans would hold it down. Uh, the city's the support behind the team and and just the people on the day to day, like I said, is amazing. And then when you get to the stadium, it's all yellow and black. So um, it's been amazing. Honestly, it's been amazing. There, I, can't, I have no complaints. I've said it. This is probably the best soccer stadium. Um, in the states, uh, in terms of fan support, um, pitch, and everything involved, so it's an honor, and it's, it's been a great run, and we want to keep that going. Jaleel, I was talking to Jaleel Anibaba, and he said he's like you'll like most people like they don't feel like everyone is talking about the atmosphere at at Nashville. He said, but players step out on the pitch on a game day, they immediately recognize it. That is a fortress, and yeah. is that something? Does, does that really give you that extra bump when you know the fans are, like, that crazy behind you? Does that give you that extra oomph? A hundred percent. When we come out, you know, even in warm-ups, <clears throat> usually stadium's about half full already, and you're just like, all right, it's game time. You feel at home. You know this is your pitch. The fans have your back. Um, there's a lot of positive vibes and energy that come from the fans to us, so it's more like an extra, just an extra support, and it almost feels like an extra player when you play at home. 
uh, just because of the, the energy that's produced in that stadium. So you want to give everything, whatever your 100 is, you want to give another 10% past that. And um, they play a big part in our, in our success at home. So we're always thankful to them. Um, sometimes it doesn't go our way, and they continue to show support. So that's very important for, uh, for our group and, and all of us as individuals. And now being a uh, – how long have you been in the league now? I mean, it's been – 2017. Okay. Years. All right. Yeah. A couple of years. Um, the the you, obviously you played uh, for a couple of different clubs. Obviously, you were uh, at yeah. Philly, uh, Houston, yeah. uh, uh, Dallas, and just having uh, kind of bounced around a bit. I think sometimes the perception of you is like, oh, this uh, a guy that we couldn't find his like he clearly is good at at, at particular things, but we can't, haven't found like a, the right sort of home. How are you feeling about your own sort of? Uh, place because I know in MLS it's kind of annoying being traded and not knowing where you're going to go and getting a phone call you don't want to get but it really feels like Nashville is a, a, a spot that uh, where you're uh, appreciated uh, uh, you're you're getting a lot of minutes you're you're scoring goals important goals uh, how how is Fafa feeling about his own uh, place right now? No, I'm, I'm in a great spot. I think uh, I mean sometimes people people change kind of change my story in terms of. Um, or they just make up whatever they feel in terms of what I've produced in the league. But I'm going on my 50th goal soon, God willing. Um, I've played a lot of defense, even times more than I've wanted to, but yeah. I think I've proven myself in this league to be an important piece to any squad um, and any team I've been on, minus maybe the Dallas COVID season where it was a strange year, I think, all around. Right. Um, I've produced at, at every club, um, even as recent as Houston, we were a last place team, but I, I produced 19 goals in two years for the club. So those things go unforgotten, obviously, when you don't bring home silverware or don't make deeper runs into playoffs. So it's hard to to justify your performances. But the numbers kind of speak for themselves. And uh, right now, Nashville is doing great as a group. And it's also allowing me to do what I have to do individually. And um, it, it gives me the motivation to want to do uh, to play both sides of the ball. So. Um, I know it's a team that can make a very deep run, if not win at all, and I have full faith in saying that. So um, when I go into these games, it's not about, okay, I got to score today. Obviously, I want to score, um, but sometimes it's dropping back and making a crazy tackle or finding a space to open up for somebody else or making a deep run to, to open up a pocket for Hani or for whoever's in that, that drop spot. So um, it's more of a, a collective mindset, um, knowing that the individual moments will come where – it's going to be me that has to take on a charge and, and do something special as well. You actually brought his name up, and that's what I was going to ask. You played in St. Pauli. One of your teammates also played in Germany over at Hertha Berlin, and Hani Mukhtar. How wild is he going training? He must do some <laughs> crazy, crazy <laughs> stuff in training. Yeah, Hani's, Hani's swift with the ball. He's got that, he's got that, uh, that relaxed, relaxed uh, approach. Um, at the same time, he's intense, which I love. Uh, he approaches the game with a lot of respect and a lot of desire, and he wants to win, and I love, uh, I love that about him. And uh, we also have a great relationship as friends off the field, so it just makes everything a lot easier. What's a, you know, we're actually, we got, we got this, uh, what, last year, right? When Hani uh, won MVP. So that this was... is actually his heavy metal album. Put out. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard him drop a track yet, so I haven't listened to yeah. that. So, yeah. I didn't know uh, Hani had bars. Yeah, he's uh, just, it's all balanced, bro. <laughs> it, <laughs> but, it's balanced to goalkeepers he broke when, up with. When bro. you hear uh, about um, Nashville, usually the names that are uh, on top of mind is usually Hani, usually Walker Zimmerman. Uh, and and the conversations, you know, I, I remember hearing a lot of people being like, oh, Nashville, uh, a great squad, but they need other people to produce besides Hani Mukhtar. When you hear, uh, you know, the media, I don't know if we're included in that, people saying stuff like that. What's the what's the mindset for for the rest of the team and, and for you personally when when people are saying like the team is kind of it's kind of just those two guys and other people need to produce for so that Nashville can end up uh, lifting a trophy yeah um I definitely hear it I hear it I heard it a little bit more before League's Cup um after League's Cup it's kind of changed to where I think people realize um I think I put up three goals within four games um and my job coming here to Nashville was to do so to give um uh, to give Hani also a, a boost and where he doesn't have to put up crazy numbers to for the team to have success. 
at the end of the day, um, I also know I have a duty as a winger where I got to be back and forth up the field and down. So sometimes stats are not going to be the number one um, priority. Like I said before, um, the biggest thing is to, to win games. And sometimes my, my stats take a back seat and that of other attackers as well. Um, and it's not to say that we don't want to score more or that we can't, but sometimes cutting off angles, being in certain spots, tracking back, um, become uh, the main priority um, in order for us to win games than just scoring goals. And the goals will come. <clears throat> I'm very comfortable in front of the goal and what I can produce. Like I said before, League's Cup, I think it was a bigger talk of that. And I think people are realizing now, at least people that are new to watching Nashville are realizing, okay, Fafa can also aid in scoring goals when needed. Um, but at the same time, I do know my duty and I, I respect the game enough to to do what I have to do to win games instead of just stat pad. I was going to ask, because you're kind of a smooth, relaxed dude, but I know you're intense as hell. You mentioned Hani is as well. And yeah. then you've got two guys who wear intensity on their sleeve in a Dax McCarty and Alex <laughs> Mule. You know what yeah. I mean? They look like they just lost a hand at poker all day. It's like, did you not have breakfast, bro? Oh, uh, who's the most intense Gosh. on Nashville? So it has to be we, Anibal Godoy, Are we talking bro. about? Are, are we talking about another? Another? Just like, have you ever looked at a cloud, dog? <laughs> 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 Anibal Godoy. Anibal Godoy. Anibal Godoy. Anibal Godoy. Uh, now, it depends. Are we talking about a game environment, practice environment? You can uh, give me the two. Room. Give me practice. Like, yo, you're doing too much, dog. <laughs> it's a Tuesday. And then you can give me the, yo, it's Saturday. I didn't know you had this gear. Practice? Practice is a tough one because... I'll I'll cool it down a bit in practice, but I can still be a little bit wild. I think the same names you mentioned are right there with with the fire. I'd add I'd add Godoy to that list that you already mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, and it really just depends on the game on the game. I know every half if we're not winning one zero, I come in like fuming, and I have like eighty eight tactical opinions. Um, <laughs> but they're all they're all out of out of positivity and the desire to yeah, win. Yeah. And um, I think the same from other guys. So the good thing is we're an older group. I don't think we take things personally for too long. It might get heated for like 10, 20 seconds, and then we go back out there and fight together. Like I'll, I see one of my men go down. I'm running up to the ref. I got to chill out now because they're starting to throw out these cards like water. The yellows, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, overall, I think, I think between us, it really depends on the game and the situation. Um, but we're we're all kind of ready to fire off. I'd say in practice, maybe add Teal to the list. Oh, Bumbery. Teal Bumbery? Yeah. yeah. Teal, okay. Teal, yeah, he's, still, he's, a, he's the nicest guy, but when it comes to that that pitch, he's really about it. So. <laughs> okay. So Something happens too. when they cross that chalk line, bro. <laughs> that chalk leaves <laughs> something to you, man. <laughs> that chalk does something. That chalk bro. is serious. <laughs> okay, so we, we mentioned Dax. Dax, I want to talk about this because we've been talking about it uh, on the show a little bit. Um, but he, he kind of went, uh, you know, viral after posting the, the picture of holding the Messi jersey after the game, right? And yeah. and some people, uh, you know... So many people. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny Chu, Chu on our show. So I, I, she caught some heat because she's a journalist and took a picture. Of <laughs> it's messy, We got to talk about yeah. the etiquette. What's the etiquette? Because I, I, I imagine it's probably not that big a deal in the locker room and, and amongst players, that is, is my guess. But or, or what about getting the shirt? Did y'all have to make an agreement as to who gets to ask for a shirt? Yeah. Um, yeah no. to, we'll start there. Um, so uh, I'm really tight with Joseph, with Martinez. Um, Joseph and I have traded jerseys 50 times. So yeah. I have, like, all his jerseys, every color. I think he has all the teams I've been in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so when I got to that game, I really wasn't thinking about changing jerseys with anyone. I don't think anybody really mentioned it, um, who they were going to trade with. or like. Sometimes you have a buddy you just want to trade. Um, Messi's messy. At the end of the day, I don't think it's something that people should look too deep into. He's, if not one of the, if not the greatest soccer player ever, uh, definitely top two, you know, depending yeah. on who you ask and what the debate is. So, I mean, I didn't, I didn't look too deep into it. I was like, man, cool, you know, it's, it's Messi's jersey. I switched with Busquets um, in the tunnel, uh, so I have his jersey. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a final. We, we all fought to get there. It was two teams that fought it out. 
and uh, two players change jerseys. That's what it needs to be looked at. At the end of the <laughs> There's day, there's something to me. Yeah, it's just people like, are like holding players accountable <laughs> for getting a message. Yeah, yeah. So dumb, so bro. To, to me, it's a walking statue. That's how you have <laughs> yeah, to look yeah. at it. He's a walking to statue. To me, look, the, the optics of it, I guess, could seem a little bit weird. I guess to to very passionate fans, right? If after you lose yeah. a game and then directly final whistle, you're asking for the jersey. I get like you could you, you haven't even gone through the process of like grieving the loss and. Already, uh, uh, your team is like sort of showing praise for uh, for the opponent. Yeah, you but need it, to get over. It. But it's messy, right? It's just yeah, like I mean, at, at the end of the day, if you if you grieve too long, they're already on a flight back to, <laughs> to Miami. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm gonna do a messy. Can you mail me? Right, right, right. Like, yeah. So we just, you know, we switch on the field all the time after almost every game. Uh, you switch. It just, I think it's magnified a bit more and. It's just, you know, he's put on their microscope because it was Messi's jersey. So maybe people bug out about it. But at the end of the day, it's I just see it as another jersey swap. And, and that's cool. We're like, hey, nice. Okay. What's the etiquette, though? Are you allowed to send someone to the locker room to get one? Or you got to do it on the pitch right after? No, nah, you, can, you can send somebody to the locker room um, depending on the situation. So after the game, we had, to, we had to keep our jerseys on for the ceremony, for the second place and first place ceremony. Mm -hmm. Um so Busquets and I said, okay, we'll switch inside. Um, gotcha. So we saw each other in, in there and switched there. Um, and that was it. Sometimes, like, uh, during normal games, you could just switch outside. Um, some guys don't want to don't switch outside so they could hide the gordo. But, yeah. but <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. all right, you know, so people have different workout routines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Yeah. I mean, we can't all be posting thirst yeah. traps like uh, that. Uh, <laughs> let me just tell you right now, my ass ain't switching shirts outside, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we switch your shirts in a yeah. dark room. In a camera-less <laughs> room, dog. I ain't letting everyone see these B cups, dog. Oh man. <laughs> that might that might be a flex though. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you know what? Some people, you know, some people are into that. What's the flex? How how withstanding my waistband is? <laughs> yes. 2023 people are into different stuff, bro. Yeah. I got a dad bod, bro. How many dads, dog? <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> you it's remarkable. I mean, it really does send, I think, the internet in a in a tizzy, bro. Yeah, like it, yeah. people get uh so people get upset for anything. But but, but I'll say this. I, I think people getting this mad over something pretty trivial kind of shows that that the, the fan base and the league is getting as like toxic as it is in Europe, right? Where every yeah. single kind of decision that you make affects like the optics and it's like no it's not a good look sure. so even though nashville hasn't been in the league that long and but and fans getting upset uh, at people sort of uh, you know wanting to trade jerseys and stuff like that i think it's like all right yo nashville fans sure. there's some people that maybe a little bit taking it a little bit more serious and maybe that's a good thing definitely i think i think it's a sign of growth uh we're starting to see more drama with different situations around the league or just in the country in general when it comes to the game and that's growth. That's great. Uh, it's great for the, the game. It shows that people care. Um, it shows that people care about the, the sport, the players, what people are doing. Um, as long as we can hold off until my next retirement in 10 years with the whole uh, what we do in our personal lives, that would be great. But I'm starting to see that jump into that uh, realm as well. So it's, um, it's great. I see the growth and the change. Um, and now with the addition of Messi to the league and, and other players with huge names, it's, it's definitely grown uh, at a quicker rate than maybe expected. Yeah, you did get that right, that perfect ratio of like, MLS players started making money, but social media hadn't really caught up to MLS. Yeah. You had that. You had that good window. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could slow flex on the. Yeah, moment. you had that good window yeah. where you could really wall out, and no one was really yeah. Fafa, talking about it on Monday. Fafa's now in the For club sure. dancing. He's like every three beats. He's like, "Yo, who's uh, wait, yeah. okay? Let me nobody taking no, we good? <laughs> He's like Busquets. He's check. He showed the check. Show the check. Now you got to rock a hoodie if you want to step out somewhere. You know, <laughs> it's crazy. It's and it's hot I wanna, I want to ask because you brought up that you had to stay out there for the the the, the second place honoring or whatever. The I mean, you, I know you were in New York, dude. You were the whole time, right? You were sucking your teeth the whole time. I don't want to be out here for this. That's like that's like going to your ex's wedding, B. It's like, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, y'all happy? That's what's up. Uh, oh, really? Oh, okay. good for you. I, the whole I, time. You, know, you know that? What's that quote? Uh, the one I will never use in my life. I hope. 
I hope you're happy even if it's not with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, no. The, yeah. Yo, you're showing your toxicity right now. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Well, Dude. That, no, was, that was my feeling. I was toxic. Okay, yeah. okay. That's fair. Um, Bro, you like it old photos on the Instagram <laughs> of League's Cup. And I know you were extra mad because you're basically an honorary Cuban, Puerto Rican, Dominican, right? And the trophy for League's Cup is a cafetero. I know you was mad. <laughs> I was ready to just, I was going to put some lechic on the inside. I was ready right. to mix it up, B. Whip yeah. up the Puma, bro. Had the hands. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, lucky, you know though. what? I I want to uh, talk about this because obviously, um, uh, Gold Cup and 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 playing for Haiti and now you're representing Haiti. Um, I mean, this is you know we've had Derek Etienne Jr. on the show and uh, yeah. you know me being Dominican and uh, we he always talked a lot of trash about playing DR. No, he, <laughs> he spoke the truth. No, I I respect that. I, respect I said that. you're like, yo, you play DR. He's like, it's on site. I was like, oh. Shit. <laughs> No, I love Derek it. Derek Etienne is so Patterson, bro. I <laughs> but, love him. Uh, Correct. What's, uh, what's this experience uh, uh, been like? And, and you know, obviously Haiti, uh, you know, the, the men's team, the women's team. Uh, obviously, the, the program is clearly, um, you know, obviously. Th it's on the up. It's on the up. But then after, you know, after the earthquake and it just needs a lot of positivity. And, and the, yeah. I think the team means a lot to, to the country. But uh, getting to put on the, the Haiti jersey and, and play for the team, what's, uh, what was that like for you? Uh, it's amazing. That was uh, my major, my major, um, or my main reason for for coming to play for Haiti was uh, exactly what you guys mentioned. It's uh, you know situations, especially now, current current events, and and um, and what the country's going through. Uh, I know that they absolutely adore football, so the opportunity to bring joy uh, through the game and uh, and go out there and make a you know a special run over the next years. And provide something for the next generation, and and just give the country more attention would be amazing. So I know how much talent there is on the, in the in the country, um, and I want I want more people to see that, whether it be um, Concacaf or also abroad. Um, we want people to to notice the talent that there is in Haiti, but we can only do that through providing uh, and producing, sorry, um, good results and going far in, in tournaments. So um, right now it's it's a question of of keeping this consistent. I think we have a, a very talented group right now uh, playing in some good clubs in different parts of the world. And, and we want everybody to see that and we want to bring that together and gel. Um, the group is amazing, dope guys. And we want to just um, do something special. I think everybody's mind is in the right place and, and we want to keep doing that, um, doing what we're currently doing, but even more to, to set the next generation up, but also to, to give the country joy for right now. I've always wanted to ask because especially for playing one of these nations that's on the up as opposed to I've spoken we've spoken to a lot of like US men's national team players but to speak so to speak to someone who gets an opportunity to play for Haiti obviously you've heard some you've gotten to meet some incredible people hear some incredible stories of how much football means but for you specifically how different is the club game versus the international game like for those of us who haven't played only because they don't want they don't want us to play you know what I mean obviously we have the <laughs> skill You're keeping us out oh, we have the skill set. <laughs> yeah yeah they they just hate him bro eventually the they'll see it but, but for someone like yourself, you get to play for both. What are some of the differences we might not notice because we've never played? Uh, it's a different pride. Um, and especially, like you mentioned, playing for a country that's kind of on the up um, and, and trying to get a bigger name out there. It's, it's a bit different having played for the U.S. already and feeling what it is to kind of be, I guess, the powerhouse um, of CONCACAF mixed with Mexico, obviously. Um, you feel a difference in that and going into playing matches for Haiti where there's a lot of noise. I'm getting texts from guys that play for Mexico, Costa Rica, Panama, U.S. Guys are telling me, yo, you guys are going to look nice this tournament or you guys are looking really good. You guys are dangerous. Yo, people are thinking this about you guys. So you, you know there's noise being made, but you still know you're kind of an underdog in some matches. And, and I think that's the beauty in it, um, that process of going from – underdog to kind of on the up and how do we what do we have to do to get ourselves to be up there with the bigger team names uh bigger name teams and countries um and then the next step would be how to hold our place there but um obviously it's uh it's an honor it's uh it's special because you're representing a nation and not a city you're representing you know roots you're representing the blood that goes through your veins and 
and it's special. It's it's been uh, it's been fantastic. My my grandfather was a captain for Haiti, so it's an honor to put on the same jersey that that he did. And you know, you have your whole family support in a country a country that lives and dies by this game. So yeah. uh, it's been very special, and I I um I don't I don't take uh, any moment for granted. Yeah, even um, to add to like Alexis's question of just the, the, the almost the difference between playing a, a club and, and international. Is it like when, when you're playing internationally, how much of it is like how, how much since you don't play with these guys very often and and how much is it really like we can we can tactically figure out how to succeed or the vibes just have to be crazy and we just have to have more heart than the other team. Like, I feel like at some point, even playing in CONCACAF, playing in some of these hot... Because the familiarity the, you're talking about is not there. Yeah, yeah, the, since there's less familiarity, is it just like, you know, having... Does does the, the psychological aspect, does the spiritual aspect, does the pride in the nation, does, is that a, 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 a significant factor in the success of an international team? Oh, for sure. Um... We know that we're all coming from our clubs. Some are in a, in great form or doing amazing. Maybe some are scoring goals. Maybe some are defending great or whatever position uh, each player plays. We all know that, but at the same time, when we come in there, we know we're fully playing for pride. It's country pride. Um, the important thing is for us to try to gel right away. The tactical part, you have a short amount of time, so it's not like you can just do the same things you do at a club um, on a regular in, in a national team camp. So you, you, know, that you know that you have a, a basic or a base of tactics that you have to try to follow. But at the same time, it comes down to heart, I feel, and, and the psychological aspect is huge. Um, but more than anything, it's the brotherhood. You go out yeah. there and you got to fight with your boys. It's, it's pretty much... A, a fight with some with a lot of beauty as well if you can produce that mm -hmm. but um you go out there knowing that you're all representing the same nation and you have to put that in your head before you step on that up step out on that field um because if you start to think about just being an individual at an international level uh, your team crumbles yeah how do you build that bond is it just you and Derek Etienne showing people how to tie tims like, what do you, <laughs> how do you <laughs> Oh, yeah, How do you build rapport? Is what I ask. What's the team? What's the team building exercises y'all do? We so we first we do the Tims. We <laughs> Gotta get that out the yeah. way. Yeah, that's Can't funny. Have anybody sloppy out here? <laughs> nah, it's funny because uh, with Haiti it's special because you have so many guys with different situations. You have some of us, Derek and I are. You know, you have a few that are born in New York, in New mm -hmm. Jersey. I'm born in New York, raised in Miami, never lived in Haiti. I've gone a bunch of times, but I still, I still speak fluent Creole, um, even though I've never lived there because my parents kept that in the home. Um, then you have some guys that are born and raised in France that have never lived in Haiti, but they've gone. You have some guys that are raised in Haiti, but now are playing other places. So it's, it's a big blend, especially this generation, to where you have some... There's one kid, I only spoke to him in Spanish the whole camp because he's played in Bolivia the last five years. Hilarious. So, wow. Um, so it's really, it's really special. And then you have Ade who plays in Ecuador. So we speak Spanish. And then you have guys that mainly speak French. You have some guys that speak Creole and French, depending which one they're more comfortable with. And then you have some guys that just speak English. So it really comes down to, to the roots. I think it's, you know, we all love the food, so that's number one. We're yeah, gonna... I was going to ask, what, what are the team dinners like, bro? bro what's, what's on the menu? No, but it's... they got healthy food, though. Yeah, they, we be having that healthy food, but sometimes Uber Eats is the right move. Like, you know, <laughs> yes. You get the, for the bonding, you get yeah. the, you tell the guys, yo, we're going to have some some of this, or maybe you have, like, a cater. So whatever whatever yeah. could build a bigger bond, I'd say for sure the music, um, no matter where we're born, raised, or moved to, we all love Haitian music. So that's a huge part of uh, of our bonding and and uh, spending time together and then just just understanding each other and trying to understand where each person grew up or how they grew up and what ties us to Haiti. And at the end of the day, we all know that we're there for for either direct roots or ancestors or or whatever the case. We know we have a tie blood wise to Haiti, and that's what we're th that's what we're there for. No, it's, so, it's beautiful. I mean, I, I think it's and it it's important for. The uh, for soccer in the Caribbean. I mean, Alexis is Cuban. I'm Dominican. I I went to a Concacaf Champions League game with uh, Cibao FC uh, that plays in Santiago, and they played against Chivas, and it was unreal to see 
soccer being yeah. appreciated. She was smoked yeah. them. She was smoked. <laughs> it was. It could have been. It could have been worse. But they did all right. They did all right. They held um, their own. <laughs> but it's a um, you know, especially since we've been doing this show, I follow now uh, you know soccer in the Dominican Republic a lot more. And there's a yeah, and it's obviously night and day between obviously uh, you know Haiti and DR because Haiti obviously uh, uh, embraces the sport. Dominicans are like it's baseball or nothing, and yeah. the, the 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 struggle for a, a lot of Caribbean nations is just to be kind of relevant. Yeah. Within uh, within Concacaf, so the way I see Haiti uh, uh, thriving and, and succeeding, it's like I that just kind of you know, for the lack of a better term, the ri- rising tide lifts all boats. But you know how we feel about boats and yeah. all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Cuban. Don't mention boats, bro. <laughs> so, it's, a, it's a little messy, but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. That Guys, so Google that. <laughs> For yes. <the> people, <laughs> just Google that. But why don't they like boats? Yeah. <laughs> oh. We need 30 ones, 30 boats. Yeah. Um, Gotta survive. But- a journey. So no, no. So it, it's like I, I give you a lot of props, obviously, uh, um, for for uh, for uh, playing for Haiti, and uh, there there is I, I just think the, the the contributions to Caribbean uh, soccer I think are just growing more and more. Where now, just uh, you know, uh, uh, Concacaf is not it's not just U.S., Mexico, Canada. Like they're really, really yeah. other nations, especially some of these Caribbean nations. I think it can actually make a, a real uh, real charge. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking about you for a second, how Dolce and Gabbana doing? They're great. They're upstairs in their room right now. Um, I hear those of you who don't know the cats, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard them on the wheel mid-interview, so they're they're getting their exercise on. I gotta feed them again later because they eat like crazy. So now here, this is what I was gonna ask you because most of the time you see uh, uh, soccer players, they go out and they get themselves a cute little dog, Mm. but you got two. Small wildcats, okay? <laughs> These are Bengal kittens, right? Something yeah. Like that? Yeah. What what happened? Why cats? <laughs> Man, so I I I moved to I never wanted pets. Um and then when I moved from Philly to Dallas, I got a crib. It had a lot of space, a lot of rooms. So I was like before I moved there, I was still living in the hotel and I was like, Man, you know, I've always I fell in love. This is a true story. My parents' neighbor's cat is named Figaro, a Dominican, by the way. Okay. And the cat, I renamed him Meow Meow. And this cat, <laughs> during off-season, followed me everywhere. <laughs> and I've never had a bond with a cat like this. And you think I'm weird because, again, four years ago, you say, yo, you, would you ever get a, pe- a cat or a pet? And I'd be like, no chance in my life I'll ever have a pet. Um, Meow Meow followed me everywhere. Long story short, I left to, to preseason. And my mom told me Meow Meow would stay in front of the door to the point where he went in the house. This cat was sleeping on the car. He was trying to find me all the time at this point because we spent so much time together. I mean, hours a day. Yeah. So I got to Dallas. I was like, my mom's telling me this. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to, let me look at cats. So I, I looked up these cat breeders. They were in Forney, Texas, about an hour out uh, from, uh, from Frisco. And... Um, I saw one little cat that out of the out of the litter that was so cute. He was like seven weeks. So I went to visit because you can't take them out until like nine weeks. So I went to see him and he was attached. It was like six of them in the litter or five. And him and the sister were attached. They went everywhere together. And I was like, well, I can't just take him because it's going to be messed up to like their bond right. that they've already created. So I ended up getting both of them. She's a pesada. <laughs> and so I named him Dolce Gabbana. Actually, Ima Tumasi from Dallas. He was wearing Dolce and Gabbana slippers at my crib, and I was like, "Yo, I don't know what to name them." He was like, "Bro, Dolce and Gabbana." I was like, "I right, bet." So I named him Dolce right. Gabbana, and that's my. Thank cat God, name. man! You might have had two cats named New and Balance, bro. <laughs> no, no, we never. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Puma gang here. Damn. Hey, this is uh, Steve yeah. and this is Madden. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you met my cats? FIFA and 18? <laughs> Yo, who would have been 18, though? The girl, the girl. <laughs> That's a good year. That's a good year. It was a very good year. Oh, oh my God. That was uh, a good vintage. No, they, no they're adorable. Easier. They're adorable uh, cats, yeah. man. But here's the thing about cats. Here's what I just found out. So I was talking to a retired New York detective, Okay. And he said that sometimes when older people pass, you know if they have a cat because immediately the cat starts to eat the owner's face. <laughs> it's 
starts no. at the nose, bro. <laughs> Now, Let me tell you. how you feel about Dolce? I mean, no, in there, I, I looking trust, at your nose and saying, "One day I'm gonna Dolce, get bro. I trust Dolce, bro. I trust Dolce, but honestly, Gabbana if Gabbana was any nose, bigger, bro. I'd be a target. <laughs> if Gabbana was any bigger, I'd be a target. She looks at me sometimes. I'll be honest. I had when I had COVID, she was very sweet. Like she was. I was. There was a moment where I was just lying down and I couldn't move. I went to feed them and I had to like crawl up to get there, and I'm just lying down. And she was the sweetest. She just came and lied down next to me, and then the brother followed sweet. But on the day to day, I think if she was a little bit bigger, I would not be here. She's out here. She's out here praying for your downfall, right? bro. She's just like, bro, like, yo, she's one of them. She's just in the corner, like if I had thumbs, <laughs> yo, watch. <laughs> you she's see like, how she can get some of those. She's like, <laughs> she's like, bro, come on, give me them thumbs. I can she's take this, for them dude. thumbs. Every time I go to church, I hear the Lord give me thumbs. I hear it. <laughs> He's trying to get candle. me. Yeah. She lighting a candle to <laughs> give me them thumbs, bro. Uh, <laughs> She's like, give me them thumbs, my G. I'll my take day's em, gonna bro. come. Right. Yeah, oh, we gonna yeah. eat that nose, good, bro. <laughs> nose first. <laughs> I mean, uh, we're talking like uh, Fafa's ninety-five years old. <laughs> yeah, on the, on the I'm trying to I'm get you prepared. <laughs> I'm thirty-two, fam. I know. I th- I'm just trying to get you prepared, bro. I'm not easy, I appreciate bro. it. They have I to rebuild it. it for the cast. I'm trying to. I'm still trying to outlove, the, uh, outlive them. I love them, but I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I I only I I house sat my homie's apartment in L.A. for three weeks. I was gonna be in L.A. for three weeks. He's like, Yo, I'm on the road in Europe. Don't get an apartment. Don't get a, a hotel. Just take my apartment. I was like, yo, free place to stay in L.A. for three weeks. Bet. And he's like, yeah, you just got to watch my cat. And I'm like, uh, maybe not. You know, <laughs> I, think, I think hotels don't have cats. You know? <laughs> and he was like, no, nah. he's like, don't worry about it. It's it's fine. It's a loving cat. It's like super docile. Bro, I would wake up and all you see are those eyes in the middle of the night <laughs> just staring at you. Piercing. I was like. <laughs> bro, I'm like, I can't live this way. No, it's it's wild. They have a different, they have a whole different demeanor. They're, I don't let them into any of the rooms except their own room. They can come out and play in the day, and then mm-hmm. at nighttime they got to go back to their room. I don't know what they're going to do in the night. So my door's closed, their door's closed. They stay in their space. They got enough space and toys and wheel and exercise yeah, yeah. stuff. Bro, you're going to um, walk in that room one day and Gabbana going to be sharpening a knife, bro. I'm yeah. telling you. <laughs> She's on, that prison, she's on that prison move. I feel it. <laughs> she's sharpening a toothbrush on the ground. <laughs> why is, why like, is well, Gabbana if I can't get that fifth finger, <laughs> can't get, get that thumb. thumb why is Gabbana making toilet wine, bro? <laughs> <laughs> she making she make a hooch. <laughs> Yo, I'm done with the toilet wine. <laughs> yeah, she's she's pouring a little piece of bread into a garbage bag. You're like, how is? <laughs> oh my god. Well, all right, Papa, we gotta let you go instead of talking about uh, your cats all day. It's but a perfect way to end. Bro, uh, seriously, this is uh, I'm so happy that we, we had you back on. Uh, like we said uh, up top, you were you were the first guest that we had at the beginning of lockdown. And and, you you, you know, your career has only uh, flourished uh, uh, since then. And it's just great to see right everything going on uh, in Nashville. Uh, you know, we always say whenever we have any player on like, yo, uh, thrive, uh, crush it, you know, maybe win MLS Cup unless you're playing YCFC. Uh, but <laughs> honestly, we just want to have a Cooligans bump. So now you got to play well next game, <laughs> so people know got you, you. got to be on Cooligans. Uh, but no, man, we wish you the the continued success. And seriously, thank you so much uh, for joining us, everybody. You know, obviously, uh, Fafa, you're you're on Instagram and Twitter. Is it just at Fafa. Uh, Fafa Gold or Fafa Pico? Pico, Fafa Pico for Instagram. on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so go, uh, go follow Fafa and, and and everything that's going on in Nashville. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, so and Nashville, much, obviously, uh, uh, doing great. So I'm just expecting, uh, you know, so a nice run in the playoffs yeah. as well. And tell Alex Mule not every photo is for a passport. You can <laughs> smile, you know. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> he, it's, it's crazy because he's also you already know it. he's also like the nicest guy so yeah, it's like, yeah. he's great, he's great. <laughs> uh Fafa, thank you so much brother all right my man thank you guys so much appreciate it man Peace. you're the best shout out to Fafa. oh Pico. my god what a wonderful amazing interview the homie the man is the home he is, he is truly 
a friend. You could see how relaxed and chill he is, like the course, like uh, <laughs> when he speaks to us. Exactly. There's a, yo, he's a homie. We're getting even if you saw some of the comments from our from our Carlos Vela interview. Some people, a lot of people were just like, "Yo, I didn't realize Carlos Calitos was this chill." Yeah, man, I had no idea he was it, that cool. I'm like, bro, that's a, nah, it's that, us. It's us. That's the us effect. Like, yo, you know how good Robert Taylor looks now because he's playing with Messi. Mm -hmm. That's how cool <laughs> yeah. these players look because they're with us. We are the Messi we're of soccer. <laughs> Podcast. Yeah, you and figure out which one of us is messy and Busquets. <laughs> All but right. that's up to you to decide. So, you know, you come on this show, you look good. Yo. We make you look good. Bro, we're like Fidel Sassoon, bro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yo. People still using that? <laughs> Damn, bro. What is it? That might Na be the old. 1987? Gotta be honest, do not understand that reference. So. <laughs> wow. I just gotta, Cindy Crawford, I think, did that ad campaign. Yo, Farrah Force it. It was the last time. That hair is wavy, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Yo, you look like Ingle Bear Humber <laughs> Yo, is that our BG? <laughs> nah, that's someone who listens to cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. Oh my god! Uh, I mean, look—if if somebody stepped out of a time machine, they'd be like, "Yo, this y'all so came out of a y'all coma. Y'all speaking to me? <laughs> wow, nothing's changed. Someone <laughs> just got out of a coma. It was like I didn't know why I listened to this whole episode, but boy, am I glad I did. <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, uh, yo, shout out to Five Pico. Thank you everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it. Make shout sure out to that guy in the coma, bro. Yo, <laughs> Yo, you awake, bro? You did it, yo. Shouts to Paul Anka. Shouts to all my old heads, yo. Uh, make sure you follow us at Soccer Cooligans yeah. on all social channels. Uh, you subscribe on YouTube. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Hell yeah. Uh, feel free to do that. We've been getting a lot of uh, uh, dope feedback, so feel free to do that. Show your love, show your support, and as always, you can join uh, uh, the Cooligans Patreon, patreon.com slash Soccer Cooligans uh, for a bunch of exclusive content. All right. Yo, and without telling anybody why, just tweet out, yo, RIP to everyone mentioned on the Cooligans episode. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Crawford's still alive, so she's doing all right. She <laughs> yo, we her, got one. We her, saved one, bro. Her mole's gone, but she's alive. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, we will see you on Thursday. I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the holiday weekend, uh, and we'll be back uh, with another fun episode on Thursday. All right, everybody. Peace. Love you guys. <laughs>